Hi, this is the Tropical Tip for Monday evening, August 26th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information for your location. We're watching a couple of storms in the Atlantic right now. We have newly formed Tropical Depression 6 uh, between the U.S. Eastern Seaboard and Bermuda. If we take a quick look at this, we see a broad circulation that has been influenced by baroclinic features, including a large-scale front over here in the northern Atlantic, and most of the convection is pushed off to the southeast. The mid-level center is somewhere in here. The low-level center is in here, so the two are decoupled and the system is tilted, and convection uh, is not occurring over the center of circulation. So this, is a, this is a weak and disorganized system at the moment and is expected to move gradually toward the northeast during the next couple of days and the official forecast doesn't show a lot of strengthening for this slow movement at first and then acceleration toward the northeast as a big trough comes into New England and starts to push this off toward potentially southeastern Canada here that has become the consensus so some blustery weather could be associated with the storm coming up in here but this isn't really expected to get that strong at the moment uh, but could bring some heavy weather to southeastern Canada later in the week and the weekend. Uh, but the big story in the Atlantic right now is the other tropical storm, Tropical Storm Dorian, uh, now quickly approaching Barbados. If we take a look at the close-up infrared satellite floater, uh, we'll see that convection continues to pulse today. You'll see a burst right at the beginning of the loop forms and expands uh, near where the center of circulation is, right about in here. And we just got our first recon plane to actually pinpoint this thing. So there's Barbados on this image here, and the center of circulation was just found by the plane east-southeast of the island, and they're now flying northeastward into uh, the upper right quadrant. Uh, the maximum winds found are only about 50 knots flight level right now. We'll wait until they sample more of the northern side of the storm where all the strong winds are. Uh, the current NHC estimate is that this has winds of about 60 miles per hour. We'll see if that's a little high. Uh, not quite sure yet. The pressure was about 1,005 extrapolated. We haven't seen a drop sound yet as of this recording, so I'm not sure how calibrated that is, but it's probably close. So this is a moderate range, middle of the road tropical storm. Nothing extreme, but heavy weather coming into Barbados now tonight as this moves on toward the west-northwest, probably passing pretty close to St. Lucia sometime tomorrow morning. Uh, the pressure gradient in the center is pretty tight. You can see right here this Barbados observation is 1010. The central observation is 1005. So this is a pretty tight little core in here, but it is still struggling due to dry air around it. You can tell that it's struggling by its shape on infrared satellite imagery. There are two signs that it's having trouble. One is that the convection has been intermittent. The other is that these convective towers are very confined to a pinpoint. And when you see these little popping uh, overshooting tops like this, when they're only confined to a point, if they're not curving around in a banded-like structure around the center, you know it's not very strong. And the fact that we see these popping up like this, like pimples, are really an indication the system is having trouble. One more indication is that there's kind of a straightish edge to this red part of the satellite image in here. This oblong shape to the sear shield indicates that there's some sort of shear or dry entrainment coming from the north, and we can investigate that a little bit more if we look at some of the drops on data. We have another plane different from this one. This one's flying at the low levels investigating the storm structure. Uh, they, we have an upper level plane that's dropping sons around the storm in succession to take vertical profile measurements. If you look at a couple of these, we'll, we'll start with number 21, shows some dry air in the mid-levels on the west side of the storm. That was this one. We can look at number 27. We see a similar story with a dry layer to the south as well. And we talked about this at the last couple of days on water vapor imagery, you can also see that the wind flow in this layer is from the south in the same layer, and uh, that's again on the southern side. So the dry air is getting pushed into the core a little bit. If we look at the north side at number 23, we'll see uh, this structure here with a bit of a dry layer between 300 and 400 millibars with again 
flow toward the center out of the north showing up here, pushing the dry air in. So there is mid-level dry air entrainment and some mid-level shear out of the north has been evident on the north side all day in some of the, the cirrus clouds on satellite imagery. And so this is probably responsible for the ragged appearance that we continue to see today, Dorian con continuing to be limited by the dry environment in which it is embedded. Uh, wind shear is not too bad, but the environment is just really dry. And so these thunderstorms are having a hard time sustaining themselves for long periods of time and allowing an eye wall to form. So far that has been denied uh, uh, thus far during the storm's journey westward. This is likely to continue as conditions are not expected to change all that much as the system moves west-northwest and eventually northwestward past the Lesser Antilles into the Eastern Caribbean where it is expected to approach Puerto Rico and or the Dominican Republic in a couple of days. We can look at the European model uh, from this morning now showing the storm a little bit better resolved in the model. This is more representative of what Dorian actually looks like in reality. Prior runs of this model were too weak with the storm, but we see this just west of St. Lucia tomorrow morning. This continues northwestward and strengthens just a little bit over the Eastern Caribbean Sea uh, to the south of Puerto Rico. And now comes the really important part in the storm's life. To this point, conditions haven't really changed for Dorian that much, and we're not expecting a lot of drastic changes during the next uh, one to one and a half days. But by Wednesday morning, this is now a fork in the road for the storm. Uh, part of the problem for the forecast in terms of uh, our confidence is that we're not sure if this is going to have a run-in with the very tall mountains of Hispaniola, up to 10,000 feet tall, can really disrupt and even completely destroy small and weak storms. And if it runs into this island, uh, that could really change things and potentially destroy the storm entirely. But if it goes around the island, uh, Puerto Rico is a little bit easier to deal with and the storm could survive to get to the other side and we may have to deal with it for a longer period of time. Uh, the European model does have it just avoiding the island. You can see how close of a call this is here and it gets up into the Bahamas so that by Friday morning we have a storm that is kind of recovering and now that it's out of the Caribbean it's into an area that's more moist. This is the really dry area down here. Once it gets up into the Bahamas things are less dry and it will probably experience uh, a fairly light shear environment, uh, which we'll talk about in a second. And so we could see a strengthening storm that would then potentially be a threat to land down the road. If we look at the 500 millibar steering pattern, uh, this is showing our storm here in this little blue bubble. We have an upper level low to the southwest of Dorian. And then we have this big ridge starting to build southwest of Bermuda. So we have this high and the flow is clockwise around this high and it's trying to force the storm west northwestward toward Florida. And that's what happens on this particular run. I won't show it because there's a lot of uncertainty beyond day four here, but in general this ridge would try to force a storm probably toward the west-northwest somewhere, and it, you know it's kind of pointless to, to decide where, our, where exactly this could occur. It's just a general idea that the pattern could favor the storm approaching the United States if it survives to get into this part of the Atlantic. But we're still several days from this, and again, whether or not it survives the trek past the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico is the big question right now. In addition to that, we have an upper level trough and potential wind shear uh, for the storm to deal with. This is the GFS upper level wind forecast at 200 millibars valid Wednesday morning showing Dorian south of Puerto Rico remaining weak here. To this point, shear remains rather low with an upper level ridge over the storm. There's not a lot of shear. However, there's this upper level trough now showing up and this cutoff low within that trough just north of Hispaniola northwest of the storm. This is starting to impart some southwesterly flow that once we move forward in time will start to impart impart higher shear on Dorian. If we go out to Friday morning uh, the Red L has disappeared but Dorian is somewhere in the southeastern Bahamas or Turks and Caicos at this time so that's where our storm is. The upper level low is now kind of elongated like this and you can see it's kind of entangled with Dorian and this is going to be key. How strong this upper level low is and how close it is to Dorian will determine how favorable conditions are for the storm if any of it survives to get up into the Bahamas because here the shear might be rather light and favorable for the storm but it could also be 
still high enough to inhibit redevelopment or restrengthening of Dorian in the Bahamas. Right now, trends in the models have favored uh, conditions allowing strengthening of Dorian if it gets into this area, but we still have some questions left to be answered as this is about four or five days uh, into the future at this point. Right now, the official forecast continues along similar lines in that it has some mild strengthening of Dorian. They actually still forecast hurricane intensity prior to moving near Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. It wouldn't be too surprising to me uh, to see Dorian fail to reach hurricane intensity, but it is possible. Uh, but right now, conditions seem to point toward Dorian remaining rather steady during the next day or two. But again, Dorian is a rather small storm and can be rather unpredictable given its size as small storms are prone to wild swings in intensity both up and down. Uh, and therefore we'll have to keep a close eye on it. But as it stands, we have Tropical Storm Watches up for Puerto Rico, the Northern Lesser Antilles, Tropical Storm Warnings for the Windward Islands, and a Hurricane Watch even for St. Lucia as the storm moves west-northwest. And through a Tuesday afternoon, we'll see impacts in the Lesser Antilles. And then as soon as Wednesday, we'll start to see impacts perhaps in the Greater Antilles, Puerto Rico, and Hispaniola. And again, you can see how close the official track is threading the needle between these mountainous islands. How much of Dorian will survive to get to the other side? That is a big question. They say in their own discussion, confidence in this part of the forecast is quite low. While the storm, if it survives, could approach the U.S., it remains to be seen how strong such a storm would be. It could be very weak or it could be getting stronger on approach. Either way, we have many days yet to watch this. We're talking about the weekend before this gets uh, anywhere close to the U.S. if it survives. So just have a plan ready. It's the height of the hurricane season. This is pretty normal for this time of year to have storms threatening. Just have a plan just in case the storm happens to come your particular direction. We don't know many details about the impact uh, that could potentially occur in the U.S. or the Bahamas just yet. Well, that's it for tonight. Thanks for watching.